Hey, welcome back to Abstract Algebra. <clears throat> um, the purpose of this, this last video lecture from section 3.3 is to uh, establish those uh, uh, facts that we were talking about at the end of our class meeting today uh, about the alternating group, okay? So let me just write here in real time while, while I'm recording this what my goals are. I wanna recall the definition of this alternating group, A sub N, and then I wanna prove that the alternating group is a normal subgroup of SN. That's your author's theorem 3.32. So we'll state it and prove it below. I also wanna prove that uh, as long as N is at least two, that the uh, number of elements in the alternating group is always half of that in the uh, symmetric group. And that's theorem 333. Three. All right, and that'll wrap up our work here on uh, permutation groups for this semester. Uh, maybe, I'd like, to, I'd like to show you a little bit about something called symmetry groups, but we are contractually obligated to uh, talk about some of the material in chapter four as well. So we're gonna just move on for the time being. Okay, so let's get right to it. So what do we know? Uh, uh, we proved last time that uh, uh, given a permutation sigma in SN, that it is possible to write sigma as a product of transpositions. So sigma ends up looking like, say, tau 1 times tau 2 up to, say, tau m, where each tau is a transposition the transposition, a permutation that interchanges two elements and fixes everything else. And we say that sigma is even if M is even. And I'll say that sigma is odd if M is odd. The M itself is not unique. Uh, uh, when somebody writes sigma as a product of transpositions, they might do it in a different number, but they never do it in a different number uh, that has a different parity. So anytime somebody writes sigma as a product of transpositions, if, if they do it with an even number, anybody else could only do it with an even number. Uh, in class on April 10th, I'll kind of outline the proof of, of that fact, but it's already proved in the video lecture previous to this one, so I, I won't reprove it here during this video to keep it shorter, but we will talk about it in class, okay? I do want to, before talking about why AN is a normal subgroup of SN, I want to kind of point out something, that if, if you take, say, products of transpositions, so this is just sort of a remark, Suppose that I take some transpositions, tau one up to say, let me just recycle the letter M, tau M, right? And then I multiply it by some other product of transpositions. Say, I like tau for transpositions, so I'm just gonna decorate these, tau star, uh, uh, tau two star, up to say there's K of them, right? Okay, so I have a product of M transpositions, times a product of K transpositions. How many transpositions total? Well, I mean, if there's M of them in the first grouping and K of them in the second grouping, then there's M plus K of them in the total, yeah? So if we think about this definition of parity above that, then we can make some remarks here. Uh, for example, if you multiply an even permutation by an even permutation, you should get an even permutation. Because if M and K are both even, you probably proved in Math 240 uh, uh, that M plus K will be even, right? So that means the product of two even permutations is even. That's gonna be the closure part of our proof of, of the fact that AN is a subgroup. Uh, uh, let's say more. What if M and uh, uh, K are both uh, uh, odd? Can you tell me about the sum of two odd numbers? The sum of two odd numbers is even. 
you multiply two odd permutations together and you get an even permutation. Product of odd permutations is even. Uh, uh, third, because of symmetry and final case, uh, what if M is even and K is odd? Or if you like, M is odd, K is even, it doesn't matter. Uh, in either case, their sum is odd. So the product of an even permutation and an odd permutation is gonna be an odd permutation. Good to keep in mind, good to keep in mind. Multiply two evens, you get an even. Multiply two odds, you get an even. Multiply an even and an odd, you get an odd. All right, all of that's true just by counting. It's counting the number of transpositions. Okay, so let's try to prove this theorem. This theorem, 3.32. Theorem 3.32, I'm just going to kind of be brief here uh, instead of trying to make this super long uh, and just write AN is a normal subgroup of SN. All right, so how to prove that? We're going to use a subgroup test to do the subgroup part, and then we're going to use the sandwich criteria to do the normal part. All right, so subgroup first. Uh, uh, well, the identity it's a product of no transpositions, if you like. Uh, zero is an even number, but maybe if you don't like that, as long as n is at least two, uh, uh, I can write the identity as the product of a transposition with itself. If I interchange one and two and then interchange them again, I get the identity. Uh, uh, so that's certainly even. It's a product of two transpositions. So that shows that this is not an empty set. There exist even permutations, in particular the identity. And then what about closure? What if we take, say, sigma one and sigma two in AN? So they're both even. Well, we just said above in our remark, I won't recapitulate it here, that sigma one times sigma two is even because the product of two even permutations is even, right? So that's by above, uh, uh, by the first one. So there's your closure, A sub n is closed. Uh, if you write sigma, if you take a sigma in A n, it's a product of an even number of transpositions. Let me just write 2k. So I don't have to write something about uh, the index being even. What's its inverse? Well, by socks and shoes, the inverse uh, should be take these transpositions and write each one of their inverses in the reverse order. But a transposition is order two. It is its own inverse. The inverse of a transposition is itself. So when you write those things in the opposite order, you still have an even number of them. So the inverse of an even permutation is even. Okay, so that shows that A sub n is a subgroup of Sn. Right, but we were taxed with a little more. I think in my, my first video for this stuff, if you looked at it, I think I forgot about this part, but I was supposed to show it's a normal subgroup. Okay, so for a normal subgroup, I have to pick an arbitrary element of Sn. Um, I've been calling sigma the even thing. So let, let me give a, a, another uh, uh, name here. Let me pick a gamma. Let me pick a gamma in Sn and pick a sigma in An. All right, and to show it's normal, let me remind you what I want to do. I want to show that gamma inverse sigma gamma belongs to AN. So I want to uh, uh, show that gamma inverse sigma gamma uh, uh, has an even number of transpositions. Well, we have to do two cases. Case one is that gamma is even, okay? So then uh, uh, when we look at gamma inverse, it's also even, we just proved that. So in this product, gamma inverse sigma gamma, we've got an even times an even times an even. Well, you add three even numbers together, the number of transpositions, that's gonna be even. That's by our fact above. The second case, 
is that gamma is odd. Okay, well, so is gamma inverse because it has the same number of transposition that gamma does. They're just in opposite order. So when we look at our sandwich, gamma inverse sigma gamma, uh, what do we have? We've got odd, even, odd. Okay, well, by our fact above, an odd times an even is odd. Yeah, so gamma inverse times sigma is an odd permutation. Then you multiply that by the odd permutation gamma, you've got an odd times an odd, that's even. So in both cases, the uh, uh, gamma inverse times sigma uh, uh, is, is an element of an, so a sub n is in fact a normal subgroup of s sub n. Cool, it all comes from that kind of multiplication principle that, that even times even is even, even times odd is odd, even or odd times odd is even. And if that sounds weird, you know, when I say like even times odd is odd, that's certainly not true in the integers because I'm talking about permutations here. I'm talking about uh, numbers of transpositions. Okay, cool. So the last thing I wanted to try to convince you of is this theorem 333. Theorem 333 says that if n is at least two, then the number of elements in a n is equal to half the size of the symmetric group. It's n factorial over two. So here's how I'm gonna to try to prove that to you. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna note that since a permutation is either even or odd, um, that if you take, oh, sorry, let me introduce some notation before I say this. Um, let me let, say, b sub n be the uh, elements in Sn that are odd. So every permutation is even or odd, uh, but not both. So b sub n is really just the complement of a sub n. So what I mean by that is that a sub n together with b sub n account for all permutations and that no permutation is in both of them. Their intersection is absolutely empty. So in order to show that a sub n is half the number of elements, we can just show that a sub n and b sub n have the same number of elements, yeah? Because if they have the same number of elements, uh, uh, together they make up everything with no overlap, so, so they would have to have exactly half. A sub n and b sub n would have to be the same size, if it, or if they're the same size, then they would have to be half the elements in Sn uh, uh, because uh, they account for everything with no overlap. Okay, so a good way to show that two sets are the same size is to find a bijection between them. So I'm gonna define a function f from a sub n to b sub n, even permutations to odd permutations, by saying that say f of sigma is, let's just follow sigma by the transposition one, two, right? One, two is a single transposition, so it's odd, Sigma was an element of an, so it's even, and by our handy fact above, uh, uh, the, uh, an even permutation times an odd permutation is odd. So given an element of a sub n, this, this recipe produces an element of b sub n. And I claim that f is a bijection. Let's see it. Uh, uh, if f of, say, sigma 1 is equal to f of sigma 2, where sigma 1 and sigma 2 are two arbitrary elements of an, well, then uh, uh, one, two times sigma one is one, two times sigma two. And by the cancellation law in the group Sn, I can cancel uh, uh, that one, two on the left-hand side. That would mean that sigma one is equal to sigma two. So our F is one to one. All right, uh, I also claim F is on to, if you give me say some odd permutation, give me some odd permutation in, in uh, Sn, um, I'll let sigma be say one, two times it. Uh, an odd times an odd is even, so sigma is in An. 
and let's just check out what f of sigma is. f of sigma is, well, 1, 2 times gamma. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, no, it's not. f of sigma is 1, 2 times sigma. <laughs> Yeah, so that's 1, 2 times 1, 2 times gamma, but 1, 2 and 1, 2 are inverses of each other, so that's gamma. All right, so that shows that F is onto. And since F is onto, it's a bijection. So we have established our claim that these two sets are equal, and since they uh, union together to give all of Sn with no overlap, it follows that half of the elements are in fact even. So the alternating group is a subgroup of index two. The index in Sn of the alternating group is two, it has two cosets. Uh, uh, that's, by the way, a second proof that the alternating group uh, is a normal subgroup of Sn. It's an index two subgroup. And maybe in class tomorrow, I'm gonna ask you what, oops, would be, uh, uh, what's this quotient group isomorphic to? Okay, <clears throat> so I will meet you back in class tomorrow. We can go over some of these uh, ideas uh, if you have questions about them. And maybe if there's time, I'd like to show you something about my one of my favorite topics about symmetry groups, symmetry groups of polygons in particular. But we'll cut this short, okay? Thanks for listening and I'll see you tomorrow.